We've come. We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We've come. We've come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding. Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome. From the time that you enter. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Once again, Apostle Dr. Schaefer, the pastor of Interceding Christian Center, coming to you with our video Bible study. To God Almighty be the glory. Beloved, I'm excited about what God is doing in my life and what he's doing in your life. And I'm thanking God that he has the grace it takes to cover each and every one of us. On this evening, we're going to continue in our series the authority of the believer, the authority of the believer. Oh, I'm just blown away by what the Lord is revealing to my heart that I'm releasing to you in this series, amen? So we're gonna talk this evening about a subject that's entitled, the authority of the believer, such as I have. Let's have a word of prayer, then get your Bible. Let's go over to Genesis chapter one. So don't take your Holy Ghost anointed finger down to verse 26, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, we glorify you, we praise you, we give you honor for all that you have done and what you're going to do. We're praying that your word be released to your people on this evening, Lord God, that nothing be impeding their abilities to learn what it is that you have to say to the church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> well, quickly, let's review. Thus far, we have talked, we started off with a series, uh, in the series, uh, talking about the authority of the belief, which was our introduction. And in the introduction, we talked about being in a spiritual battle. We are in a spiritual battle. We're in the midst of a war. Whether you want to be involved or not, you have to take sides. Your birth certificate is like a draft card inviting you or pushing you into this war. And in that war, we talked about who our enemy is and further who our enemy isn't. Amen. Then we also have talked about thus far roads or pathways or portals that the enemy used to get to us. And that we come to recognize that the battle is in of our mind. I use scripture to remind us that we must guard our heart with all diligence because out of our heart comes issues of life, issues of life. Further, what comes out of our mouth originated in our heart and what's in our heart grew from something that crossed our mind, something that was planted within our mind. Amen. Then next we talked about, or we talked about thus far, the topic of being under the umbrella, underneath the blessings that God has afforded us. The umbrella is that covering, that protection, that protects you from the elements in the natural, but in the spirit, we have a spiritual umbrella which protects us from the spiritual elements, amen? The apostle Paul put it this way, he talked about the, the whole arm of God, he talked about the implements of the arm of God that are used to protect us in our spiritual walk. Now the believer is in a covenant relationship with God, and part of that covenant allows that protection to come for us, and we are underneath that arm Umbrella, underneath that umbrella. Then we also talked about thus far a controversial subject. And that controversial subject is called limiting a limitless God. Oh, people get a little upset when you say that God can be limited, but we prove that in scripture that we can limit God because God is a respecter of who we are. And by being a respect of who we are, we have our own dominion. We have to walk out our own salvation in him. He's provided the way, but we have to walk the way. Amen. Amen. And on this evening, I want to delve into this next one, which is, hallelujah, the authority of the believer, such as I have, such as I have. Just the words, such as I have, brings up so many thoughts in my mind. It brings up a thought of something being given to us in a free manner. It brings in thoughts of someone opening up a portal or opening up a buffet table of sorts with your favorite foods on it and say that you can eat everything on this uh, table that you want to eat, that you want to eat. So in the series, 
in the in this part of the series called Such as I Have, let's first go to Genesis chapter one and read it. Genesis chapter one, verse 26, starting at verse 26, amen. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God did what? God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he him. God is good. Amen. Amen. Now listen, Jesus, after his resurrection, after his resurrection, had called the disciples together. He had already spent 40 years, 40 days, pardon me, in many different venues proving who he was. He appeared before hundreds. He appeared before thousands. He appeared before just a few. He appeared uh, several times to disciples, once when uh, when uh, Doubting Thomas wasn't there, another time when Doubting Thomas was there, amen? So he appeared before them in different venues over that 40 day time period. Now in those times, he worked to encourage his disciples to carry out the great commission. In other words, I poured into you so much. Now I want you to go and pour out what I have poured into you. Now, as a sidebar, I want to remind you that to carry out the great commission, you have to have it in your heart, the great commandment. That is the realization of who Christ is. And once you realize who Christ is, you have no problem carrying out the great commission because you have such adoration, such respect, such love, such fear of the power of God. Hallelujah. And you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Amen. 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 No one can claim to have the great commission without having a great commandment being at the forefront of their heart, the forefront of their hearts. One of the last things that Jesus did, said before he ascended, after he had gathered everyone together who was remained, the 11 together who remained before he ascended into heaven, uh, he met up with them and he gave them these words that are found in two places in the Bible, amen? Matter of fact, there's three places where the story is told, but different things are kind of added to it, but all those things are from the perspective of the one who wrote it, amen? Okay, he gave us the words in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. I'm gonna read it for you. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What is that saying to us? Let's get deeper. Uh, shallow Christians are not going to make it in this day and age. Christians who have who have attitudes that are contrary to what God wants, Christians who are, are easily offended, you're not going to make it in this day and age, amen, because you're going to be offended. Christians who, who are, are partial to people because of the way that they talk or the way that they walk or whatever talent or, or charm that they have, but the person is not walking in God, then believe me, believe me, you're going to have a hard time making it in this world, in this world that we're in right now. So let's go deeper. When the Lord Jesus spoke those words, what he was expressing is the superior nature of authority that he has been given. The name above each and every name, hallelujah. Now listen, Adam and Eve were first given dominion over the earth. They were given dominion over the earth, amen. They lost dominion over the earth, hallelujah. Jesus came back and Jesus restored unto us the dominion in the earth realm. So as a born again believer, we have been given even more authority than Adam and Eve, even more authority than Adam and Eve, because we needed more authority than Adam and Eve needed, hey man, because the enemy is rampant in this earth that we're in. He's rampant in his day and age. So we need authority. And, and, and the way that we get that authority is being obedient unto God Almighty, amen, amen, and, and exercising that authority. You know, exercising is so important in the physical as well as it is in the spiritual, amen. In the gospel, Jesus told us to pray. 
to pray to keep our relationship, pray to keep our relationship. But notably, when referring to the sick in Luke 9 and 2, as well as in Luke 10, uh, 10 and 9, his example said, go heal. Luke 9 and 2, let's get that one first. Amen. Glory unto God. Luke 9 and 2, let's get that. Thank you, Lord. Luke 9, hallelujah. It's what Jesus said. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He sent them to do what? Preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Then Luke 10, and Luke 10, glory unto God, hallelujah. Luke 10, Luke 10 and 9. And heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you come nigh unto you glory unto god the lord has released healing power to the body before the resurrection and further in matthew 16 the great commission he released healing power to the body he told him in luke 9 go and heal he told him in luke 10 go and heal he has released healing power to the body that healing power that he released to the body was released when he received the stripes that he received so that we will receive the healing power in the body. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Mark 16, in, uh, uh, where the Great Commission is shown there, it says that signs and wonders shall follow them that do believe. Hallelujah. So look, look. So the power initially given to the disciples when he first sent out the disciples to do healing, and and we know it was to them uh, uh, that has been given, what has been given to them has been given to every other believer. Every other believer has that authority, have been given that authority. So we have authority and thus a responsibility to bring glory to God by healing, by healing, by healing healing my god my god my god hallelujah let's get acts 3 6 to 8 acts 3 6 to 8 then peter said silver and gold have i none but such as i have give id in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the hand by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising god hallelujah glory unto god look look at that i just saw something that has really just blessed me i mean it's it's the it's the fact the truth of it is that peter and 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 the disciple those with him at that time they said, we don't have silver and gold. We don't have anything of the value that you're begging for. But what you're begging for is not really what you need. What you really need is healing. But you have to, of course, do what? Receive that healing. You have to receive that healing in order to walk in that healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and Peter and J James said, said that, that, that uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's interesting. How he put that? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It's, it's like he's telling those who have crucified, who had crucified Jesus, that in the same name of the one that you crucified, uh, whether you want to believe it or not, I told you in chapter uh, 2, Acts chapter 2, that uh, he died for your sins. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's up to you now. But in his name, I'm healing this man. I'm bringing healing to this man, this specific man. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is bringing healing so that you will not get him confused with any other Yehu that's out there. It's Jesus the Christ of Nazareth who has brought forth this healing. And he said, in that name, Jesus, thank you, hallelujah. In that name, get up and walk. Get up and walk, hallelujah. Oh my God, my God. In the same name, I tell you today that we have to learn to get up and walk in the favor that God Almighty has given us. In that same name, I'm telling you today, we have to explore and realize and receive what God has given. Oh my God, my God. I don't want to get off subject, but that excited me. Amen. Amen. So listen, listen. In the same words of this teaching, Peter and John, rather, 
Peter and John had the power or authority and therefore the responsibility. They had the power because it had been released to them, hallelujah, not just on the day of Pentecost, but it had been released to them when Jesus sent them out and commissioned them to do things even up to the point of him ascending to heaven. He had they'd been given the power and authority. Now it's them taking the responsibility, hallelujah. We were not given the authority to make us look good. We were not given the power to make us good. Hallelujah. Now notice how Peter nor John began to, no, notice how uh, nor Peter or John began to pray. They didn't begin to pray before they commanded healing. They didn't begin to pray before they commanded healing because they lived a life of prayer. And because they lived a life of prayer and they had been given the power by Christ Jesus to heal, they commanded that man to be healed in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Peter, not in the name of John, but in the name above each and every name, they commanded him to be healed, to rise up. Hallelujah. And when they pulled him up, he leaped up. He leaped up and began to run around, began to bounce around, and he followed them into the temple, leaping and bouncing and shouting and glorifying and proclaiming that God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, no, they didn't begin to pray before. They just said, such as I have, what I have, I extend unto you. See, this is the healing power that Christians need to walk into. Oh, my God. My, we need to walk in that healing power. Hallelujah. We need to be so prayerful in such a close relationship with God that when we walk into the hospital room, that what comes forth from our mouth, such as I have, in the name of Jesus rise up from that sick bed hallelujah hallelujah see see they're 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 not praying before they're doing that indicates that their relationship was ongoing it was ongoing and they were like a full better they were charged and they were ready they didn't go to the Lord begging Lord please heal in other words do uh, uh do we or do are we not provided the provision We've given the provision. We already have what it is that we need. Hallelujah. Amen. They knew that by the stripes of Jesus that they were healed themselves. And they knew by the stripes of Jesus that those that they encountered that would believe, all they had to do was believe, would be healed as well by those very stripes. Hallelujah. They knew that the same that, that, that by the same stripes that healed before, people could be healed healed again hallelujah they knew that the same stripes the same healing stripes were available to this man who previously was lame and all of this was for the glory of god almighty hallelujah so it's not that flesh could get glory it's not by human ability that this occurred it's by the stripes that jesus healed by placing your faith in him and what he has done what god has already made available to us we are healed. By stripes, we are healed. Not by stripes, we will be healed. But by stripes, we already healed. Even though the symptoms may be there, we're still walking into our healing. Walking into our healing. And we're saying the same thing that God says, that we're already healed. Glory unto God, such as I have. In the Great Commission, Jesus also gave us the great provision. Matthew 28 and 18, all power, all authority, and with authority, a responsibility, hallelujah. All power, power with authority, which is the rule, responsibility. One small word which is ran over is therefore. And what does therefore mean? The etymology of the word therefore is simply for that by reason of that, because of a given thing that has been said or a given thing has that has been done. We're healed by his stripes. They've already occurred, amen. So we're already healed because his stripes have occurred, amen. So the etymology of the word, therefore, is just that. It's just that. It has already been done. It's already been done. It's saying, looking at the dare right there, 
in the four mentioned before it has happened before so we're already healed we already heal we heal why because jesus received the strike we heal how why because we call upon the name of jesus we give remembrance unto god what god says that he has already done amen because the name of jesus was elevated above each and every name and all power was given unto him he turned and he gave us the power he gave us the keys to the kingdom. So when Peter and John said, such as I have, they're referring back to the truth that they've already received the keys to the kingdom. They're referring back to the truth that Jesus had sent them forth before with power and authority. They're referring to the truth that Holy Spirit had came on the day of Pentecost and they had been endured with supernatural power. They're referring to the truth that Jesus said, here is the key to the kingdom. And what you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So such as I have, such as I have. See, when you know who you are and you have fully embraced who you are, then such as you have, then you're able to use it without reservation, without fear, without shame, without misinterpretation, without self-glorification. You're able to utilize what God Almighty has given you. Such as you have. When you operate in such as you have, you no longer walk in fear. Yes, you may walk in the valley of the shadow of death, but death is just a harmless shadow around you because you know that the rod and staff of God is there. You know that God has already sent angels before you. You know that your help is on the hill coming down rapidly to you. You know when you walk in the understanding of such as you have. Hallelujah. Glory unto God, such as you have. We have to frame it in that manner, in that sense. The believer has so much authority, but the believer cannot walk in fear. He cannot walk in the hindering power of fear, but he has to walk in the power and authority that God Almighty has released to the body of Christ to operate in this realm, to manage this realm, to have dominion over this realm that we're in hallelujah to god almighty be the glory such as i have the authority of the believer beloved i'm thanking god for you i'm praying that this message or this this series is a blessing unto you amen i'm praying that this series hallelujah is touching you where you need to be touched in the time such as we live right now amen beloved also the lord has pressed upon my heart every time that i go forth in a sermon or a teaching or anything such as that i'm to put forth the offer of salvation of course offer of salvation if you don't know jesus as your lord and savior then you can accept them right where you are. It doesn't have to be a special occasion. You don't have to wait till you get cleaned up. Don't let that fallacy or that false doctrine claim your salvation, but walk according to what God has said. He said, I'll clean you up. I'll clean you up. All you gotta do is be willing to be cleaned up. Hallelujah. You're not clean before you take a bath, amen. Hallelujah. But God said, I'm willing to clean you up. And also, Lord has pressed upon my heart the last few months to talk to you about the rapture. If you listen to this and the rapture has occurred and you're in the midst of the great tribulation, amen, and you feel as if all hope is lost, well, somehow God has allowed you to sit here and hear what it is that I'm saying on this day. Hallelujah. Through his ventures or however God has done it, he's allowing you to hear this you can still accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can still repent of your sins, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No, it'd be, it's too late to come up with the rapture with those who are first pulled off of the earth. Uh, you will still go through the part of, of the tribulation that you're gonna go through, that you are assigned to. You'll get to the point where it's the mark of the beast is required to buy, to sell, and all those things like that. You're gonna go through some things, but beloved, once you deny, once you deny the woes and the ovation of the enemy and the enemy decides that your life is no longer worth anything, your natural life is not worth anything, and you may even face the death, then know that you're going to open your eyes on the other side and be the presence of almighty God. Hallelujah. 
Let me pray for you. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for this day. We give you glory, praise, and honor, oh God, hallelujah, for those who may not be saved, oh God, and those who may listen to this in the future, oh God. Let the words come forth, oh God, with clarity, with understanding, oh God. Let them find the resources that they need in order to make it in to the kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, if the Lord so touched your heart, you can be a blessing in Interceding Christian Center by going to our cash app, which is dollar sign interceding CC. Once again, dollar sign interceding CC. Glory unto God. Or you can go to the Giveify app, download it from your Apple or your Android store, and look at for Interceding Christian Center. You see the beautiful picture of my wonderful wife. First Lady, Pastor Tina Schaefer, and you can be a blessing to us in that way. Amen. I thank God for those who've been a blessing thus far and those who continue to be a blessing to the ministry in these trying times. I'm praying that the Lord continues to bless you, keep you, and restore unto you the joy of salvation. His mercies are new every morning. God bless you. I pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.